Welcome to Nintendo Ninja News. I'm your host, Chris Dices, and we're here to talk about something a little bit different. Um, I was watching one of the, the very few podcasts that I watch, because um, it's hard for me to watch hour-long podcasts. And I was listening to If We Ran Nintendo by um, Bobby and Sean, who's a, uh, an American-Canadian um, duo, um, the Nintendo Guru YouTube uh, channel. They... They make very interesting stuff, um, which is very cool. <clears throat> and I'm going to be sipping this a lot because I do have a bit of a sore throat and it's winter here in Australia, so it's very cold. Now, they were talking about the Nest Mini <clears throat> and they were talking about, you know, how they would they would have done the product and, and all that sort of thing. And they talked about adding Wi-Fi and SD cards and more games and things like that. <coughs> and it sounds like, you know, particularly good ideas. Now, where I find the, the bone to pick, the to pick, um, is essentially I think a lot of people are not understanding what this this product is targeted at. So, so this product is targeted at people who have not played a Nintendo console in a very long time, and it's aimed at families who do not have money to buy a big $300 console with $60 to $80 games that are in Australia, and who just want to buy just a single unit console that you plug into your TV, and you press the pl the on button, and you've got 30 games to play. No moving parts. Your five-year-old son hasn't lost the SD card. Your son hasn't accidentally used the, the credit card and downloaded 10 NES games by mistake. It's, it's a dummy-proof console that's almost a replica of the 1983 console. <clears throat> I hope I've got that year right. Um... <clears throat> And that's essentially what the product is. Now, <clears throat> here in Australia, it's going to be released for $100. Now, let's think about, well, how about we add these features, hypothetically. We'll add Wi-Fi. We'll add sort of like, I would say Nintendo would do like a dummy down version of the eShop. So that will require servers and that to, to run it. Now, some people even suggested even further than um, Bobby and that to actually be able to play online with each other. So online servers would need to be paid for and people to run it and to make sure that that is working. And that $100 price tag, which is pretty tantalizing here in Australia, lots of, the pre-orders have run out, that's, that starts to jump up. 130 probably 150 maybe 160 based on those prices and that starts to become a little expensive now <clears throat> that 150 dollar price tag is around the same as a nintendo 2ds and it's only 50 dollars less than getting a new 3ds uh, the smaller model with the face plates now the problem is if the price difference is pretty small, then I would say most parents or most people would just go and buy one of these, which plays most of your NES games and a whole lot more features for it. <clears throat> so the product <clears throat> is really mostly about um, just a cheap standalone console. And I can understand the logic behind it. It should have my Nintendo on it. It should be a way to entice people to get into <clears throat> into the ecosystem of Nintendo. But I think by making it more complex, because I think this question is mostly answered by hardcore Nintendo fans. We're going to buy this. I'm, I, I have it pre-ordered. But I think for the casual gamer, they don't want something complex. They don't want to buy SD cards. They don't want to worry about if this shop on on the nest mini is you know how long will this e-shop last for will will the the shop shut down after a couple years or so <clears throat> you've got to worry about the things going to be online 
all these sort of complex things. It's like a replica of the original NES or the Super Nintendo. You just buy your console, you've got your games, turn on the, the on button, grab your controls, that's it. There's no complexities, there's no trying to find a hard drive for this, trying to get different controls for it, buying expensive games. <coughs> and it's a great purchase for families who can't afford big budget games. And I, I, and I think that Nintendo's working out their own three pillar sort of system here. And that system is for people who don't really want to pay for Nintendo games and they don't want to, <clears throat> and that they're willing to spend a couple bucks on it each week. You can get Nintendo games on your phone or your iPad. Animal Crossing and Fire Emblem are coming out on it soon. And Pokemon Go has taken over the world. So there's the option for your casual gamers who they don't want to buy the big console and all that sort of thing. But they just want to play a couple of Nintendo games on the run because they know it's, they're very good quality games. <coughs> and that's great. It's very good. But what if you're one of those people that sort of like, well, well, I like those smartphone games, but I don't want to pay $300 for a console. I don't want to pay $60 for each game. That's a lot of, lot of money to invest. And I don't have time to play many games. But I am fond of some of those old Nintendo classics. And that's where the NES Mini comes in. And that's where they can buy those things. So... And I would say that there will be a Super Nintendo and possibly um, an N64, maybe a GameCube. Could you imagine a mini, mini GameCube console? It would look even extra cute. And I think that's that's quite possible. <coughs> and that's your middle, middle tier of these three pillars. You've got your smartphone games and you've got this little option here in the middle. The midway point. Now... For some of those with the NES Mini, the nostalgia factors coming over them and thinking, you know what, I want the full meal. I've got the entree meal. I had a taste of it for free. The tasters, you know, the food markets. I want to go for the whole meal. I want to have the, the big steak and the chips and the little veggies on the side. That's when you can buy one of these. You can get all your games, you can get your $60 games, you can go on the eShop, you can have all the whiz bang stuff, you can have, get yourself an external hard drive, you can go for the full meal. Or you can get one of these, Nintendo 3DS, <clears> there's <throat> another option. Or, <coughs> while this thing comes out in November, and they've played it for a couple months, and they look on TV, on online, they're going, oh, there's a new console coming out by Nintendo. Oh, well, I, I enjoyed playing the NES Mini and I'm still playing a bit of Pokemon Go. Um, I might buy it just to see what it's like. This this NX console. Apparently, I heard that Pokemon might be on it. That would be pretty fun on my TV. So there's your three pillars. The sort of strategy that I feel like that they're going with. So you got something for free. Your little taste of meal. You've got your entree which is your classic mini versions of the consoles, and you got your full meal. You know, we're the heavy eaters. We're the ones that, that munch down on the, on the big stuff. And if you try to make the NES Mini too complex and it costs too much, then basically you're just paying for an even more gimped version of a Wii U <clears throat> when it starts getting $150 to $200 price. So that's why I think... The Nest Mini is fine as it is. It's a good price. It's 30 classic games. I'm, and I'm sure that if you ask most hardcore Nintendo fans, there'll be some of them going, oh, geez, I wish they had that game on it. Oh, they missed out on that classic game. Oh, what were they thinking? But for the average Joe on the street, they're not really going to know Castlevania. They may have heard of Mega Man, but that it's so far in the, in the distance the only two characters that they know from the NES era is Link from The Legend of Zelda, who they probably still call Zelda, and that plumber called Mario. They're the two main characters that they probably remember the most fondly. <coughs> or from that era, probably Sonic from the, the Genesis era, and the Master System from that other side. So, 
that's what I think. I think the three pillar thing is pretty cool. That's my theory. But um, I think that Nintendo's just starting to show some some smarts about it. And um, I'll definitely be picking up the NES Mini. It's the last console I don't actually have. So I can fit it nicely somewhere in the TV unit. So I think it's a good idea. I like where Nintendo's going. And I will throw lots of money at you, Nintendo, if you do an N64 version of it. But it's going to be so hard because it won't have Banjo Kazooie or GoldenEye or Perfect Dark. Oh, maybe do a deal with Microsoft, please. Please do that. Um, that's it from me. And I um, hope you enjoyed this, this little chat. It went longer than expected. That's it from me. And I'll see you later on.